Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back. Now, why do I have this calculator up? I was supposed to hide it until it comes out. Um, today, we're going to be doing some math, all right? We're going to be doing a little bit of math. It's not everyone's favorite subject, but, you know, if you if you want to be efficient in Monster Super League, you definitely need to know how to do a little bit of calculating. And that's exactly what I did. I did some calculating yes yesterday. Um, I found out I made a mistake. I made two mistakes, actually. Um, one is actually a mechanical mistake that actually happened in the game. In yesterday's video, I showed that... I basically can get like 35 seconds, like, you know, literally 35 seconds flat, um, not, a, not a single second slower. Whenever I'm running on Star Sanctuary on the gold stage, if I put in three monsters that don't have any sort of like AoE animation that can slow down my animation even more than, um, you know, the Jin's initial like AoE animation. Basically, the strategy was to put in some, some random one-star monsters. Like, especially like light dark monsters if you're running this stage, so they actually get hit and get killed, and then your Jin can basically kill everything to make sure um, the animation time is not wasted. Now, there is actually something really, really bad about this. I'll kind of show you guys right here. I'll put in random dark monster, I'll also put in random light monster, and for the last one, I'll put in, I guess I'll put in another dark monster. It shouldn't, shouldn't matter too much as long as they, because after the first turn, um, the Jin will have a full bar. So this should be able to get me like 35 seconds flat, not a second slower. Actually, it might be slower depending on like some some of the animations. Some monsters actually have slower animations. I was I'm talking about like the ghosts and kilobats. Um, you know they can actually slow down the run on their first attack. But after their first attack, basically my Jin always gets his bar full, and he always does this, and then just everything dies. And then he goes and he hits them again and then they die again. Um, so I basically showed that you can get like the, the least amount of farm time doing this, but but that's actually a mistake. Like it's actually not efficient for me to do this. I think it was the ghost. The ghost on the first stage really slowed down. Like his anima attack animation was hella slow. It, it really slowed down my run. Um, you kind of need to not get a ghost. So, as you can see, I only got um, about 600 gold doing this. And then if I sell the gem, this this is like 3,600. If it didn't have a substat, I think it will only sell. I remember it would only sell for like 2,600 or something like that. It's very, very low um, if it ev doesn't even have a substat. So I'm basically only getting like 3,000 gold or, or you know, like four to three to 4,000 gold. Um, Actually, there's a little bit more than three, four thousand gold, like around four thousand five hundred to three, like three thousand to four thousand five hundred gold um, every single run that I'm doing this. So it's not really efficient in terms of gold because there's actually a mechanic in the game that determines the amount of gold that you get per stage. So what I actually did instead was I went and I put in some monsters, like some, some monsters with a lot, lot of multi-hit, but they were also light dark. I put in the light Victoria because she actually, um, I kind of need her because she has, she also has Siphon as well, so it's more likely that she gets her AoE up, and then her AoE will do more hits because it's, it's going to be hitting more monsters. I put in the light Succubus to boost bars for, for my Victoria and um, the, whatever other monster I have. As for the dark monster, because I need to put in a dark monster to make sure the Jin never gets hit. So I put in um, put in this this where, where is he? Put in this dark Indra because the Indras have a, a lot of hits on the, both their first and second skills, and you'll see that you actually get a lot more gold on on these runs. Um, yeah, let me just turn on auto because the amount of gold that you actually get, you see these monsters dropping gold and like going into your monsters. That is actually determined like the amount of gold you get on the stage is actually determined by the amount of gold that um, amount of gold that like or the number of hits that you made on the enemy because the more hits you do the more gold that it generates so you'll see after this run I actually get a lot more gold than the run I did before so this was 37 seconds and See, I got so much more gold. I got, um, you know, almost 2,400 gold. Got a four-star gem. This thing sells for 3,500. So from this, I got um, 4,000, 5, 5,370 or 47 um, gold from this run compared to before, where I only got 4,200 gold. 
I, I basically got uh, like more than 1k more gold by putting in monsters that, that actually did more hits. So, you know, this actually makes quite a lot of difference in terms of farming because I did a lot of calculation. I uh, Not a lot of test runs. I, I don't have a very big sample, but I actually sat down and I recorded 10 runs using this exact same team that I did before. And I got an average of um, 5,983.25 gold per per run. And I'm going to do a little bit of math for you guys. So we'll just we'll just have this like, you know, kind of farm in the background. I'll do a little bit of math for you guys um, with this calculator over here. All right. So uh, we're going to calculate the amount of gold that you can get per 100 astrogems. Like the amount of astrogems you can get back spending 100 astrogems on the stage. OK, so we're going to do a little bit of reverse math, um, like calculating backwards from the amount from, you know, 100 astrogems. So everyone knows that 3,300, uh, or not, 330,000 gold equals to 100 astrogens. If you do sliming, um, you can convert this amount of gold into 100 astrogens through sliming. If you're very, very new and have no idea how to do that, you can look up my channel, like how to farm astrogens. Um, you, can, you can basically, in this game, it's possible to farm astrogen, which is the current, like the premium currency. You can farm up astrogens um, infinitely by doing this. So 3,300 and um, three, not 3,000, 330,000 gold equals to 100 astrogens. Basically, this is pretty common knowledge. So um, this is the amount of gold that, you know, that is equivalent to 100 astrogens. Now we're going to do a little bit of reverse math. We calculated that I, I did a total of six, six runs and I got an average of 5,985.2, 89.2, oh shit, 83.25 gold. Um, so I'm going to round that up a little bit to 6,000. It's only a difference of, um, only a difference of 17, which isn't too big. Like 17 gold per run is not, it's not that big of a difference. So I'm, I'm just going to do a little bit of rounding to make the math a little bit easier. So I'm going to base it on 6,000 gold. All right. So we're going to have to divide this by 6,000 gold um, because this is the amount of gold from perhaps 100 astrogens divided by 6,000 equals to 55. Now this is the amount of runs needed in order to get that amount of gold. So you will need 55 runs in order to get 3,000, 333,000 gold. Um, and then I'm, I'm like looking at my notes right now. Um, 333,000 is, you know, it's converted to 100 astrogems. So 52 runs gets you that amount of gold. Now I want to calculate the amount of energy required to do 55 runs. So the amount of energy required to do, do Star Sanctuary on the gold stage, on this stage, on extreme mode, is 5 energy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by 5. And this gets me to 275, um, 275 energy in order to get that that you know that that gold or equivalent to 100 astrogems. And then I need to, um, I basically need to, uh, like five is the amount of energy required to run Star Sanctuary. And then I need to convert reverse like convert this back into energy. So we all know that if you refill with 30 energy, you get or 30 astrogems, you get 80, 80 energy. So to convert the energy back into astrogems, I will need to first, firstly divide by 80 and then t multiply by 3. So basically, t um, times, well, uh, because like the, you know, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just do it right here. <laughs> this is like not worth explaining. I'll divide by 80 um, because 80 is the amount of energy required, right? So if I divide this by 80, this, is, this number is the amount of um, the amount of runs, or actually, what, what is it? This is just a temporary number because um, you need to divide by eighty to get like this is the amount of 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 uh, of something like per 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 refill. It's just it's like a placeholder number. It doesn't really have any meaning because you need to divide by eighty and then times three in order to get the amount of. Um, of astrogems, so we're gonna we're gonna times or not times three um times thirty, we're gonna divide by eighty and then we're gonna times thirty and then this gets me to one o three point one two five astrogems. So basically that amount of gold um gets me about a three point one two five percent profit. 
And that is where my second mistake um, comes in. Because I th always thought that I was losing a little bit whenever I'm farming on Star Sanctuary, which is actually wrong. Because I'm actually making a positive positive profit every single time that I'm running or running Star Sanctuary, getting that amount of gold, and then converting the gold back into astrogems through sliming. I'm actually making like three astrogems every single time that I run like 50, 55 runs of Star Sanctuary. Um, yeah, every every time I run 55 runs of Star Sanctuary, I make about three astrogems, um, which isn't too much. But what this means is I'm not actually bleeding out, and I'm actually able to make a pro positive profit each time I'm doing this. And I can basically infinitely farm Star Sanctuary nonstop without really losing anything at all, which is actually kind of a relief because I I always thought that like the only reason my astrogem count wasn't going going down was because I had this like 30 30 day astrogem pack running, um, and the extra extra gold from doing like you know double double XP or or not double XP double gold um, whenever the hour is up. And doing stuff like um, you know getting gold from the trees and stuff. I think that was, I thought that was why I was never losing out on, on any gold. And plus, you also get some gold from like catching legendaries and catching variants. So, if you're able to basically not lose anything and make about a three percent profit, you also profit from basically just playing the game. Like you can get gold from doing your doing your arena uh, or not arena PVP. Um, you can get gold from doing a lot of things, like doing clan battles. You can get gold from doing, from clicking the trees every hour. Um, you can get, get gold from events. You can get gold from, you know, like the daily friends and stuff like that. So basically, if you if you never spend anything, like if you don't spend your gold at all, and then just kind of wait passively um, for your gold to accumulate through other things, you can basically just, you know, your your gold can kind of go up um, to. To make about enough for like Heroes Festival and stuff like that every single like 15 days or so of just running Star Sanctuary nonstop, which is actually pretty amazing that I can I can do this because this means that I can make the um, the most amount of Dragon Sigils within a week without really farming anything else. I don't have to worry about myself bleeding. I don't have to worry about um, not being able to get Astro Gems to do, to do certain things. So that's that's pretty much it. That's that's just some a little bit of. Um, a little bit of math and a little bit of like this game mechanics that I want to show you guys to, you know, make your farming even even more efficient. Um, because I've already reached the physical limit of the fastest possible way to like farm dragon sigils and stuff. But now I'm trying to get my efficiency up. Now with the first mechanic, with how like monsters basically get give you generate more gold the more hits that they do, I actually got this like this really cool theory. Um, of making like a super efficient farming team. Basically my Jin's able to one-shot everything, right? So I only need other monsters that can basically get their AoEs up really really fast, but not do enough damage to kill the enemy with their first skill. So I think a, a perfect monster would be something like Water Arthur or like Wood Balrona because they have like a 50% morale boost and they don't have very high attack. Like, you know, the, the Arthur... Um, I think I don't even need to get him to Evil 3, like, I think even Evil 2 is enough, he's like 2200 attack, and if I can get him like on a Siphon Gem with like a little bit of attack, he can basically get his bar full like every single turn, um, and, and also he can, actually wait, no I can't use an Arthur, because he's water, well I might be able to use him in like a stage with wood and, like wood, wood monsters and stuff, but I don't, I don't even have an Arthur. Um, I was thinking the same thing with Balrog. Basically, you can hit them, and then you can, um, through your 50% SP Siphon, plus the a little bit from Morale Boost, or not Morale Boost, um, from Siphoning, you can get a full bar as well. But you need to make sure like you, you basically get their damage just high enough to get the get the Siphon to 100% to SP, but not enough damage to kill everything on the wave. Um, so I need to like basically get like hit that sweet spot. And then they can basically, after first turn, they'll just be nuking nonstop with their AoE. And because, you know, with their AoEs, they can, like, it doesn't matter if they kill with their AoEs, because everyone, the, even the Jin is going to be using his AoE as well. So everything's going to die, but they're also going to be doing the maximum amount of hits. And I think if I do that, I can actually get even higher efficiency. I might be able to make, like, you know, 4 or 5% profit every single time that I'm doing the conversion. Um... So it actually got me really excited, like for Heroes Fest. Like, like my most wanted Heroes Fest monster is like Water Arthur now, or Wood Valrona, just to get like the max amount of hits, and I can I can farm even faster. But I think for Star Sanctuary, I might need like 
dark monsters to do that. Hmm. Damn, my stupid dark Mona doesn't have a square slot. She has, she has a 30% SP boost, but it's, it's kind of hard. Because she also requires crit. So I'm not sure if there aren't any like other dark morale boosters with AoE that can get hit as well. Or maybe if I just want to be like somewhat efficient, I can just run. Um, I can just run... I can just run like one Water Arthur or something like that. And then I can run another like light unit that basically just is, is there to tank the damage because I really don't want my Jin to get hit. I don't want my Jin to get stunned or, or take attack down because that will actually slow down my runs even more. So I think I can put in something like the Light Succubus and then this way it's even easier to get like if I have like Water Arthur to get his bar f up to full without killing anything because I'm basically boosting like 60% bar um, on first turn. So I think that might actually be a pretty good idea if I use something like a Light Succubus. And then for a Dark Monster, I'm not really sure what I, what I can use. I mean, I do have the Dark Cura, but the problem with the Cura is she's not a she's not an attacker. She's a healer. Like so, even even if she has a full bar, she won't be able to nuke. Um, so I don't think she's going to be that that effective. I wish there was a I wish there was a Dark Monster that had a team morale boost. Oh, there is a Dark Monster with a team morale boost. Right here. Oh, not this one. Right here, this one. <laughs> um, but, you know, she's not even obtainable. And if you get her, you basically win the game anyways, because she's, like, fucking so OP. Um, yeah, I think she even might be able to get her bar up to full, like, if you put, like, a siphon set. And then blue soul generation is pretty lucky, because she has, actually has, like, a 20% 20, 20 boost. But anyways, that's that's enough theory craft for today. Um, just wanted to show you guys a little bit of math, a little bit of, you know... Correct myself because I actually made a mistake yesterday um, sp showing you guys that because it's not really effective. Although it does get you the fastest possible farm time, um, you don't really want to do that because it just you you lose gold doing that. You know, and you want to you want to be able to keep your gold even. And trading in like three seconds for for like a thousand less gold per run is really not worth it because you're you're basically making a negative profit um, that way and. If you're doing it this way, you're actually able to make a positive profit, so about a 3% profit. Um, just with my team, my team's not even anything special, it's just, they, the other monsters don't, um, besides the Victoria doesn't have Siphon, so, you know, I'm, I was thinking, um, you know, put in, put in some team morale boosters, and then, you know, maybe for my last unit I can just use, like, another Siphon unit that's, like, strong enough to, like, kill the wave as well, or maybe, like, just run... Oh no, I need to run a dark unit, so it's not gonna work. Alright, I just need I just need them to release Dark Valrona into the game. And I need to, I need to pull Dark Valrona. I'm not trying to pull her to do like PvP or arena or anything like that. I'm just trying to pull her so I can get like even f higher efficiency in farming. Which, you know, I'm I'm, I'm fucking crazy, alright? I'm fucking crazy. Um But anyways, that is pretty much it for today's video. Now I just wanted to, you know, show you guys that. I thought it was it was pretty fun. Um Maybe you guys aren't that interested in farming, but I'm I'm like super like enthusiastic about it, about trying to get the highest amount of efficiency possible to like you know, so I can like farm the fastest, but not like now I'm now that I'm already the fastest, I'm looking towards trying to get the most out of it, like every single run. Um like the get the highest efficiency um while maintaining that that same like, you know, this that same maximum speed. Um so that's that's pretty much it. That's, that's just something I wanted to show you guys. Uh, I just, it just got me super excited. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And, um, you know, that was pretty cool to show a little bit of math. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.